The movie opens with an elderly and intoxicated man named Fluger digging up a grave that has some religious markings. He seems to be performing a ritual of some sorts. After a while, Fluger manages to retrieve a person's skull from the grave, which suddenly releases white smoke and knocks him back. As he wakes from the ground, Fluger laughs as if his mission is completed. The scene then shifts to a teenager named Kelly who is shopping at a convenience store. Here, we get to know that Kelly has a habit of chewing papers, and due to this, this. His classmates call him Trash Can to bully him. While he is going through the items, he meets his childhood friend and crush, Dominique, but hesitates to talk to her. Outside the store, Kelly is confronted by his school bullies, Nelson, Tony, Reed, and Brad. They make fun of him for eating strange things like paper and styrofoam. Just as they're bothering him, Dominique steps in and urges them to stop. This angers the bullies even more, and they push Kelly's face into a trash bin. Fortunately, the store owner intervenes, stopping the bully and chasing them away. After this, Dominique offers Kelly a ride to the school. However, her friend Sarah, who owns the car, refuses to let him in, mentioning that she does not want her car to be dirty. But from the sounds of things, he'd just eat the garbage in the back and make it clean. In the next scene, Kelly reaches school, only to find that the bullies had recorded the store incident and spread it online. As he walks through the hallway, all of the students make fun of him. After school, Kelly returns home, and his mother Bernice inquires about his day. Our boy does not mention the bullying and simply replies that Dominique talked to him for the first time. Hearing this, Bernice becomes happy and suggests that he ask Dominique out on a date. Meanwhile, an indigenous man named Red Elk comes across the grave which Fluger destroyed earlier and offers prayers. It is then revealed that a secret power was hidden in the grave and it has been stolen. Red Elk is very sad to learn this because it was his responsibility to take care of it. The following morning, Kelly falls ill from consuming a lot of paper and styrofoam. Bernice immediately summons the family doctor. Is he sick, Doc? No, he's just an idiot. The doctor suggests that he see a psychologist for Kelly's eating disorder. He also hints that Kelly might be acting abnormally as there are no males in the house. But in reality, the doctor has a crush on Bernice, and he simply wants to get in bed with her. The same day, Fluger is shown in town, claiming to have the power to heal people. He demonstrates it by relieving an old woman's joint pain. Coincidentally, Bernice is also there, and she gets impressed by his skills. Believing that he might help Kelly, she invites him to her house. While Bernice steps away to get her car, Red Elk confronts Fluger and informs him that the powers are not meant for him. He also offers to help him get rid of his healing powers. However, Fluger declines, and a scuffle ensues where Red Elk ends up injuring himself. This is due to the powers Fluger received from the grave, which protects their possessor. Red Elk then warns Fluger about the consequences of the power, but the latter dismisses him and walks away. After a while, Fluger reaches Bernice's house, and when he tries to heal Kelly, he feels a strange pain and quickly pulls his hand away. He then excuses himself to the bathroom and consumes a special drug before attempting again. Unfortunately, when he tries again, he accidentally burns Kelly's chest with his cigarette and collapses to the floor, dying on the spot. Strangely, as Fluger dies, Kelly's condition improves and he stands up feeling quite energetic. Soon, the police arrive at the scene and take away Fluger's body. They conclude that the old man simply died of a cardiac arrest. Next, Kelly notices that the burn on his chest has miraculously healed, and he has gone through some physical changes as well. It becomes clear that Fluger's healing powers have been transferred to Kelly. The next day, Kelly accidentally cuts his finger while repairing his bike, but something amazing occurs. The wound heals itself and instantly disappears. He tries to tell his mom about it, but she doesn't believe him. His dick has also grown three sizes, but he can't go telling mom about that now, can he? On his way to school, he meets Dominique and Sarah, who are astonished to see him looking so much healthier. After they leave, Nelson's brother Reed approaches Kelly and starts hitting him for no reason. Surprisingly, as he punches Kelly in the stomach, Reed feels the pain, while our boy remains unharmed. Reed even tries to hurt Kelly with a wooden block, but it doesn't work, and he ends up injuring himself. Understanding that he can't defeat this new version of Kelly, Reed then runs away with bruises on his face. Later that evening, Gus, Reed's father and the football coach at school, visits Kelly's house to find out what happened to his son. Kelly explains that Reed came to hit him, but got hurt himself. Gus, of course, does not believe in this and argues with Bernice. However, Bernice urges Gus to leave and closes the door in his face. Eventually, after he leaves, Kelly confides in his mom about his ability to transfer pain, ensuring that no one can hurt them again. He proves this by withstanding the heat of a cigarette lighter, which does no harm to his palm. The following day in class, Kelly's imagination runs wild as he finds Dominique's hairband and envisions himself and her getting intimate. He also begins thinking of Sarah in a threesome encounter. Oof, soon he'll find 
find out if he can transfer the pain of rejection. Surprisingly, the sensations start affecting Dominique and Sarah in real life. Both of the girls feel strange sensations in their bodies, leading to unexpected reactions. Sarah even screams into light in the classroom. Later, at a night party, Nelson behaves inappropriately by picking up Dominique without her consent. This angers Kelly, so he confronts Nelson and urges him to put Dominique down. But as the boys are about to clash, Gus steps in and separates them. He then confronts Kelly and mentions that one day, he will surely find out the power he possesses and destroy it. After the party is over, while everyone is on their way home, Brad and his friends come across Kelly, who is riding his bike. Because of the previous incident, they are still angry and attempt to push him off the road with their car. Unfortunately, Brad loses control and hits Kelly with the car, running it over him. The impact seems severe, but when the smoke clears, it turns out that Brad's skull has been crushed, leading to his death while Kelly is unharmed. Soon a crowd gathers and Kelly secretly explains the situation to Dominique, including his extraordinary ability. Nelson and his friends lie to the police, claiming that Brad swerved to protect Kelly because he was cycling in the middle of the road. However, a preliminary investigation by the police officer, Adler, clears Kelly of any wrongdoing. On the other hand, Red Elk learns about Fluger's demise and visits his grave. Analyzing the soil, he concludes that Fluger lost his power before dying. Upon hearing about Kelly's survival after being hit by a car, Red Elk pays him a visit at his workplace. He confronts Kelly about the powers, and after a bit of hesitation, the latter confesses to being treated by Fluger. The next day, Kelly and Dominique are having lunch at a cafe and talking about movies. They're ignoring the fact that Kelly crushed Brad's skull. In reality, Dominique also likes Kelly and wishes that he would ask her for a movie night. To her good luck, he does just that, and the two agree to watch a movie soon. At the same time, Nelson and his friends are upset seeing Kelly move forward with his life so easily. They decide to avenge Brad's death and teach him a lesson. How can they teach a lesson if they never learn one themselves? Later at night, after learning about Kelly and Bernice's schedule, Nelson and his boys wait for Bernice to leave for her night shift. However, she falls ill and decides to skip her shift. Seeing his mother unwell, Kelly asks her to rest and heads to town to buy medicine for her. Noticing a car driving away, Nelson and the group mistake Kelly for Bernice and decide to scare him. They attach Kelly's trailer house to their truck and pull it with full power. With Bernice still inside, they accidentally drag the trailer away, making her fall from the couch. The chain doesn't detach properly, so the group leaves it in the truck after wrecking the trailer. Because of this, a pipe of gas bursts in the kitchen and fills the house. Shocked, Bernice tries to exit but stumbles upon a lamp and falls to the floor. Unfortunately, the lamp catches fire and the gas ignites nights, causing a huge explosion. After a while, Kelly arrives at the scene and rushes into the trailer to save his mother. Tragically, he's too late, as Bernice has already passed away. The traumatic experience deeply affects Kelly, and he mourns his mother's death inside the fire. After a while, Officer Adler spots burn marks on Kelly's body and admits him to the hospital. In the next scene, Red Elk approaches Adler at the hospital and informs him about Kelly's unique power. He suggests discussing the matter with Kelly, but Adler deems it inappropriate to delve into ancient folk tales during such a challenging period in Kelly's life. Understanding the situation, Red Elk tells Adler to reach out when the time is right. The following day, after miraculously healing his burn marks, Kelly goes straight to his mother's funeral where he is supported by Dominique. She assures him that crying doesn't make him weak and that his mother will always be proud of him. Kelly then reveals his plan to leave town, which disappoints Dominique, and after sharing a heartfelt kiss, she leaves. After that, Kelly visits Fluger's grave in the same cemetery and begins eating a wild weed growing on it. He hopes that it can take his powers away. However, as soon as he chews them, he feels sick and begins vomiting. Sarah, who happens to be nearby, witnesses everything from a distance. Oh, he's a recovering vegan. Later, Officer Adler drives Kelly to social services and discusses his mother's accident with him. Learning that the trailer fell before the gas explosion, Kelly becomes convinced that it was no accident and someone knowingly pulled it to break the support. At the same time, Nelson and his boys are driving in their truck, showing no remorse for their actions. They are heading to the river bend to unwind, probably with beef jerky and hand jobs. On the way, they encounter Adler driving Kelly out of town and taunt him. When our boy notices the truck, he immediately realizes that they are the ones who are responsible for his mother's death. Hence, without wasting any time, he jumps out of the moving car and stealthily pursues them to the river bend. Later, while Tucker swims and the others playfully throw stones at him, Kelly slowly grabs Tucker's shirt and uses it to strangle himself. This leads to Tucker struggling to breathe and stay afloat. Ultimately, he drowns in the river. As Nelson and the others look on in horror, they immediately rush to help him, but it is too late. The bully 
has died. Kelly then arrogantly reveals himself as being responsible for Tucker's death. He attempts to grab Nelson's shirt, but just then, Officer Adler arrives at the scene. Kelly quickly runs away to avoid any trouble, and the bullies try their best to explain what happened. However, Adler finds the story hard to believe, and he instead starts suspecting them of their friend's murder. That night, Kelly meets Dominique and admits his plan to avenge his mother's death. However, she suggests that getting Nelson and the others to confess is better than resorting to violence. Kelly also agrees to her words, even though it's too late he already killed one of them, and they share a close moment together. The next day, Kelly purposely provokes one of the bullies, Tony, in chemistry class, hoping to make him confess to Bernice's murder. At first, the bully controls himself, but when Kelly makes fun of his girlfriend, Sarah, he loses his cool and throws acid at Kelly. Unfortunately, because of his powers, Tony ends up burning himself and dies on the spot. These bullies are so dumb it hurts me, witnessing all of it. Dominique gets enraged at Kelly, compelling him to leave. At night, a grieving Sarah meets Nelson, and they conspire to avenge Tony's death. Here, she informs him about a vine from the cemetery that made Kelly vomit. Together, they then head to the graveyard to retrieve it and use it as a weapon against Kelly. The next day, Gus takes his sons to football practice, where Adler notices the chain used by the bullies on Gus's truck. He questions Nelson and Reed about it, but they deny having any information. Just then, Kelly arrives at the practice ground with an electric drill, wearing a piece of Nelson's clothing. He then threatens to harm himself until Nelson confesses his crimes. However, the bully is prepared, and he has brought weed juice from the cemetery. As Kelly starts drilling, Nelson sprays the weed juice on him, stopping his progress for a moment. Adler pleads with Kelly to stop, but he drills his knees, hurting Nelson until he confesses. Right then, Dominique arrives, convincing Kelly to halt the action. Amidst the chaos, Gus steals his gun from Adler, and in a fit of rage, shoots Kelly. To his bad luck, he and Nelson get shot in return, and the two die on the ground. Darwin's got his work cut out for him. After the incident, Dominique convinces Kelly to give up his powers and return to normal. Adler also decides to help Kelly and takes them and Red Elk to Fluger Cemetery, where a ritual is performed. They dig the ancient grave, and Red Elk mentions that Kelly needs to die to release the powers. Hearing this, Kelly attempts to flee, but a police officer shoots him, accidentally shooting Dominique and himself as well. Mortally wounded, Kelly kisses Dominique before she passes away. He then consumes the dead Fluger's heart to end his power. After this, Adler shoots Kelly and kills him. In the last scene, police officers carry Dominique and Kelly's dead bodies in a van. Suddenly, on the way, Dominique wakes up, revealing that she has now possessed Kelly's healing power.